So we just had the launch of the brand new M2 Pro and the M2 Max chipset and the brand new M2 and M2 Pro is available in the brand new Mac Mini. Last year in 2022, we got the brand new Mac Studio with an M1 Max or an M1 Ultra inside. But with the M2 Pro inside the Mac Mini, it has upped its game quite a fair bit. But today what I want to do is I want to find out which of these Macs is best for value when you decide to sort of spec this up, the M2 Pro, to similar specs to what we have with the Mac Studio and to work out which one is the better buy. So today what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing an M2 Pro Mac Mini versus the M1 Max Mac Studio. And without further ado, let's begin. So the new Mac Minis are really powerful devices, especially if you pick, for example, the M2 Pro over the normal M2 chipset inside this machine. With picking the M2 Pro version, you actually get a few extra features inside this. So for example, on the back, you actually get four Thunderbolt ports and also you get HDMI 2.1, what allows you to output to 8K video at 60 frames per second, what's really, really impressive indeed on this machine. For this Mac Mini with an M2 Pro inside it, you can pick different sort of chipset options for this. You can either pick a 10 core CPU, what basically gives you four efficiency cores and six performance cores, or you can decide to pick yourself the four efficiency cores and you can also get the eight performance cores, giving you a total of 12 CPU cores. There's also the option between 16 or 19 GPU cores as well. And all of these cores have been tweaked up a little bit more faster than what we got in the original original M1 Pro that was available only in the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pros. There is also the choice of 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM and you can also spec out the hard drive from 512 gigabytes all the way up to a couple of terabytes too. But we also do have the bigger brother Mac Studio with an option of an M1 Max or an M1 Ultra inside it. And if you were to pick the M1 Max chipset inside it, yes, you can get yourself the 10 core CPU inside it. Well, obviously it's gonna be less than the 12 core M1 Pro option if you pick that, but you do get far more GPU cores. You can pick between 24 to 32 GPU cores, which is really, really amazing. You could also pick 512 gigabytes of storage too, and you can go all the way up to eight terabytes of storage in this machine. And also for ports wise, and then for ports, they're a little bit more generous than what you get with the Mac Mini. So for example, at the front here, you actually get two USB 3.2 ports if you put the M1 Max option. And then on the rear, you've also got four Thunderbolt ports, what are actually Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 sort of speeds. You also get two 3.2 USB a ports very similar to what you get on the mac mini and also as standard you also get a 10 gigabit ethernet connection whereas on the mac mini you actually have to pick to have a 10 gigabit option as an extra so what I've decided to do for today's comparison is I've equipped out this brand new Mac Mini with an M2 Pro with the 12 core CPU and also the 19 core GPU. And I've also equipped it with 32 gigabytes of RAM and it's also got 512 gigabytes of storage. And this M1 Max inside this Mac Studio here, as you can imagine, it is the 12 core CPU and I've also got the 24 core GPU. So that's five more GPU cores than inside this machine. And I've also got 32 gigabytes of RAM and also 512 gigabytes of storage. At this stage, this is where I would say things are starting to get a little bit mad with the specs that I put inside this Mac Mini. By just me picking out that 12 core CPU with the 19 core GPU and also upping the RAM up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, it's actually exactly the same price as the M1 Max Mac Studio. And to be fair, you can actually pick up one of these Mac Studios with the specs I just told you about for $1,800 on the Apple Refurb store. And they come up quite often available to actually buy. And you get all the usual bits and pieces in it. You actually get that 512 gigabytes of storage, 32 gigabytes of RAM that I talked about. And you also get the standard one year Apple warranty. So the question to be asked is, what's the point in this brand new Mac Mini having an M2 Pro inside it? Because the second that you up the RAM, or if you turn it up to the sort of top range M2 Pro chipset inside it, there's no point buying it because this one here, the Mac Studio, you get more ports and you also get a more powerful GPU in theory. 
Well, with that, I actually want to put that to the test. I actually want to see with these two configurations, which one is better for value. So what I've done is I've done some sort of benchmarking and I've done a couple of tests for you. So let's run through those right now. So as we've seen here with the performance, we can see that the M2 Pro is better in single core and in multi-core performance. And to be honest, we were expecting that because at the end of the day, we do actually have tweaked up more cores and we also have a few more cores as well compared to what we actually had with the M1 Max, what could only go up to 10 cores. We've actually got 12 cores. So there are no surprises here. Let's have a look at Cinebench next of all. And there we go, again on Cinebench, for just CPU performance wise, again, the M2 Pro is definitely ahead. But this is where I think the story is going to change with our next test. What I'm going to show you here is a Geekbench Metal score, basically. And this is a Metal uh, Compute score, so this is basically checking out the GPU next of all. So again, as much as the M2 Pro is a great new chipset out there, the M1 Max, even with the 24 core GPU, and especially that the M1 Max um, CPU actually has two hardware encoders and decoders inside it, this really does benefit out the Mac Studio here. Uh, but the next thing I do want to check out, and this is one of the big controversial things out there right now, it's actually to do with the actual SSD or the hard drive speed inside it. So I decided to run a black magic test on both of these machines and let's see what we get for 512 gigabytes of storage. So as you can see here, definitely the Mac Studio is far faster in its sort of storage, sort of read-write speeds. But again, I'm not actually surprised by this. I think Apple made a bit of a mistake last time with the M1 chipsets that they actually put a bit too fast sort of storage inside the machines. And what I mean by that is at the time of the M1 Pro, the M1 Pro can only sort of export files um, like this video that I just did a minute ago at a certain kind of speed. It can only go up to the performance of the actual chipset. And basically the speeds of the SSD inside it were more than capable. In fact, they were way more capable than what they should be for that. So I think what Apple made a bit of a boo-boo, it was actually in the last generation in making them a little bit too fast. And they realized this and sort of slowed it down a little bit and put that inside the machines because they know that it's they don't actually have to be that fast for doing most of the tasks that you would need to do. Obviously, copying and pasting files around and things like this are going to be much more quicker and a bit more snappier, obviously, with the last generation with the M1 Pro and compared to the M2 Pro sort of Mac Mini that we've got out there. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. I would actually say it's still more than capable. But again, I would say for the matter of this test, that obviously the Mac Studio with the M1 Max and that 512 gigabytes of storage is far faster. But there again, it is giving us a faster performance in exporting videos, also in graphical power too. I could talk about thermals next of all for both of these machines, but as seen already with the Mac Studio and also a lot of other YouTubers out there with the brand new Mac Mini, thermals are not really an issue with the M2 Pro or the M1 Max chipset inside in the way how both of these machines are made. They're absolutely fine, so I'm not going to touch on that. But in conclusion of what Mac I think is the best value, I have to say straight away, with by a long shot, it is definitely the Mac Studio. The Mac Studio gives you far more ports. It gives you far more performance because generally most of the tasks you're going to be using this machine for are going to be for graphical intense sort of tasks. And also you're going to be using it for say video exporting and things like that or video editing, photo editing, music editing. You get the idea. It's going to take advantage of most of the bits and pieces that are inside of this. I've also not even talked about memory bandwidth, for example. The memory bandwidth in this one is 400 gigabytes, whereas this one here is only up to 200 gigabytes. So yeah, you get far more memory bandwidth inside this machine too. So it's a far superior machine. Don't get me wrong, with the M2 Pro sort of Mac Mini, personally I would say if you just pick out the standard M2 Pro, so this is the 10 core one with the 16 core GPU inside it, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and say you didn't go above one terabyte in storage, then yeah, I would pick this machine machine in a heartbeat but if you are trying to spec this out to have more RAM inside it or more CPU cores or GPU cores straight away I would switch to getting one of these Mac Studio 
videos. Especially also at the same time as I showed earlier, you can pick up one of these for $1,800 from the Apple refurb store. And in fact, in other places, I've actually seen these sell for about $1,600. So you can get them even cheaper now, especially that they're coming up to about one year old at the time of making this video. So definitely, as even as time goes on, these are gonna come even more better value, I believe, than this machine here. So personally, in my honest opinion, if you're gonna pick one of these and you definitely need the performance on your desk between you don't know if you're gonna pick M2 Pro or M1 Max, I would favor M1 Max in my opinion. And with that guys, it's time to wrap up this video. What are your thoughts? Would you rather pick up the M1 Max or would you rather pick up the fully specced M2 Pro chipset with 32 gigabytes of RAM? I would love to know your thoughts and put them down in the comments below. And also on that note guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also at the same time, if you wanna hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons like this one today, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time guys, I will see you really soon. Bye bye.